This is Okanowski of We Are Change.org with the Tim Pachette, the Liberty Advisor. And in this video, we are going to be talking about the very important social economic ramifications with the current situation that we're dealing with, specifically talking about the supply chain of food, which many people believe is threatened. Now, you should understand that, that many people that handle and process your food usually work in processing plants in factories with very close quarters to each other. And because of this, many workers have been calling out sick, specifically workers that are at meat packing industries that are closing all throughout the country, including Tyson, one of the largest meat producers in the United States that just closed its biggest pork plant after, of course, many workers have called out sick, which leaves many people worrying about the possibility of a meat shortage, which, again, we have to understand is a reality here with the crazy circumstances that we are all dealing with. And now at least seven major U.S. meat plants have stopped their operations. And with that, Many people think that the food supply chain is in peril. And, it, and, and it's not only sick workers working in factories, working in close quarters that we should be worried about. We should also be worried about the supply chain mismanagement and mismatches that have been going on. And according to the Produce Marketing Association already, five billion five billion dollars worth of fresh fruits and vegetables have already gone to waste as of course we're also getting images of thousands of gallons of milk being poured down the drain and now you might be asking yourself well why is this happening well many of the schools and restaurants and other institutions that rely on this produce obviously aren't open. Supermarkets usually don't have a direct relationships with the seller. And with that mismanagement, a lot of food is going to waste. And with that, it's seeing the breaking of our supply chain as of course, many Americans are lining up for food banks as of course, many people are unemployed. And the information we're getting right now is that there has been a 70% increase as of late in the number of people that are relying on food banks. And many food bank workers and volunteers are saying that they are being overstretched or forced to give out less food. And they are worried about potentially not having enough food to go around to feed the hungry unemployed masses that now exist in this country. Because as you know, the United States economy just wiped out all the job gains since the Great Depression. And we just added another, as of late, 4.4 million Americans to unemployment claims. That is now a total of 26 million people that are on unemployment. This of course is still two to three weeks behind in many states and also doesn't factor in some independent contractors, not all of them, but just some of them, which looking at all of this scenarios unfolding in front of us, the mismanagement, the workers calling out sick, the long lines at food banks that are just absolutely crazy to see um, Tim, I, I think the best way to kind of describe the situation is, um, whoa, I don't know about you, but I, can't, I don't know what else to say. Well, I mean, I don't want to say whoa, whoa to the, you know, the people that just lost their jobs, you know, at the hand of, I mean, now a lot of these jobs maybe are jobs that shouldn't have been there to begin with because, you know, absent the government low interest rates and the Federal Reserve creating an environment to create all these distortions, maybe we wouldn't have seen some of that uh, in the first place. Now, with that said, uh, you know, we have seen, I mean, just recently over here, all of the jobs since, you know, basically over the past 12 years have all been wiped out just in the course of, of a month. So, you know, what happened is, unfortunately, these companies got way too over leveraged. Uh, you know, everything was focused on the stock return. And so the easiest way to basically game their stock return was by buying back their own shares. And so instead of investing in to, you know, saving up for a rainy day, uh, you know, and because part of it is they saw what happened in 2008, they being the big major companies. And what happened in 2008 is all the big banks, all the big 
companies and CEOs that basically, you know, acted recklessly to put people in this position to begin with, all got benefit, all got bailed out, all benefited. And so that's part of the playbook. And now there is this moral hazard that because of what's going on and because of all these bailouts, now there is a moral hazard for the big CEOs and big banks to keep doing this because why shouldn't they? They've already been bailed out several times. They've already been bailed out in 2008. They already were bailed out when the Federal Reserve was created in 1913. And the reason, not to take a little detour here, but the reason the Federal Reserve was created is because there's actually something called the Panic of 1907, which almost nobody really knows about the Panic of 1907. Uh, now, there was other panics too. But I forgot what year it was. It was either like 1919 or 1920. There was uh, one of the greatest... Uh, stock market downturns ever, but we allowed the free market or, or however much free, I mean, compared to today. I mean, it was definitely a free market compared to what we've got going on today. Uh, and so we never hear about that. And, the, and I can't even recall what year it was because there was no intervention. Everything went down. Bad businesses went out of business. The people who had money came in, bought those up. Then the good businesses then survived and thrived. And we never hear about that. It was only all the intervention that happened in, in, as part of the Great Depression. And it was that intervention is what actually greatly exacerbated the Great Depression and made it the Great Depression and made it that much longer. Now, the reason the Federal Reserve was created is because in 1907, J.P. Morgan had to backstop the financial system himself. And he's sort of like, oh, well, this sucks. You know, I've got to take my own money and backstop the financial system. It wouldn't be great if there was a, you know, a private or Federal Reserve. Uh, now, that wasn't the initial name they came up with at the time. But uh, you know, it wouldn't be great if there was you know, some sort of mechanism where when everything crashes down, we can have you know, the government and the people socialize the losses. That way, J.P. Morgan, you know, one of the richest people in the world at the time. Uh, actually, actually, that's a whole other side because he wasn't really the richest uh, when he passed away because he was actually a front child. Uh, sorry, a front man for the Rothschild family. That's a whole other uh, issue over there. But anyways, what went on in 1907 and what went on in 2008 and what's going on today, all are basically results of the same thing, where when everything goes down, we the people are the ones who get screwed. And then the big banks are the ones who ultimately always benefit from whatever's going on. And so if we get back to the screen over here, we see that US jobless claims reached 26 million, uh, wiping out all gains since 2008. And we've also seen that there was 565 Americans who have lost their job for every confirmed COVID-19 death in the U.S. And so uh, you've got to ask yourself, you know, at what point is it worth it? And maybe, I don't know, Luke and I didn't do any show prep on this beforehand, but I don't know if Luke and I see him, you know, kind of, uh, you know, twitching around over there. Uh, so I don't know, uh, you know, if he thinks that that's worth it or if, or if we should, but, you know, every job, and this just goes to show you, like, in this day and age, how come it should be a lesson that we should be more prepared using things like Zoom, using things uh, working virtually. But I just don't know. I mean, when you see a number like this, Luke, of 565 Americans have lost their job for every confirmed COVID-19 death. I mean, what, what sort of uh, maybe some of your first thoughts that, that spring to mind? Because obviously we're always doing well, like, fake well, stats. Yeah, well, and, again, we need decentralization. And uh, we had that on some level with some governors going far beyond than others with their lockdowns. Meanwhile, some other states didn't totally lock down at all. You look at South Dakota, North Dakota, Nebraska, Utah, Iowa, Oklahoma, Arkansas, a lot of those states didn't really implement a lot of measures that restricted uh, the economy. Other countries like Sweden didn't restrict measures. And th that's really the big test here. Sweden is the big test. We're going to see exactly what's going to happen with that country and what's going to be the right approach. Obviously, a lot of people are talking about the lockdowns, uh, sometimes even just being completely ineffective. But again, that all depends on where you're at, what your city uh, is doing, what community you're in, what neighborhood you're in. And again, I have to say decentralization is the key here and deciding individually for yourself what is the right thing to do. There's a couple of people protesting right now. Well, again, you know, you know, protest all you want, but there's also, you know, you have to think about this. They're protesting about not being able to work. There's a lot of jobs out there that are available. There's a lot of jobs in the food factory, uh, food processing industry. There's a lot of jobs in the essential industry. There's a lot of jobs out there available. And I think in a more effective measure, instead of just having, a, you know, this like little, you know, amusement, self-congratulatory little rally, I think it would be better to have a movement that actually goes back to work. <laughs> you know, stop looking 
for a savior. Stop looking for someone to centrally tell you it's okay to do something. Do the right thing. And I think the right thing to do would be to help out, especially in the essential services needs. Again, our economy is a service economy. China's a manufacturing economy. Let's get back to servicing. Let's get back to the essential care and needs that this country needs to run. Let's not just have a day where we just go out and scream in the middle of the streets. Uh, again, I, I see that as kind of, uh, you know, kind of a, you know, know, protests don't really, I could get into so many different topics here. I don't want to, I don't, I I don't want to get into it, but but I think, but I think right now it would be smarter to have a movement that helps out in the fields that need work. Because again, if you look at the the situation that we're dealing with right now, especially with the food supply chain, uh, try to get some seeds. It's very difficult to get seeds for farming. You try to get some chickens, very difficult. Most chickens, uh, you know, are, are backed up all the way until the fall of this year. Uh, you know, when you look at the grain, seed, and food reserve vault, the United States doesn't have any of it. You look at a lot of these factories, a lot of them are, are shutting down because workers are getting sick. If you don't, if you believe this whole thing's, uh, you know, a hoax, you think this whole thing doesn't exist, and, and you're protesting to get your job back, why don't you just go work at the factory? Uh, I think that's common sense, and I think that would help everyone, right? Am I wrong? Well, I mean, one thing I want to, you know, kind of uh, follow up on that is you mentioned that there's some people who are pissed that they can't be at work. Well, there's some people who are pissed that they still have to be, that they haven't been fired yet. And so we see here on screen, it says, she got a forgivable loan. Her employees hate her for it. And so as part of this forgivable loan, you have to basically keep your employees still on payroll. And so a lot, so we have Black Lewis saw the 177,400, or sorry, $43,800 loans, one for each of her spas. She owns in Washington as a lifeline. She could use her payroll and other business expenses. She halted pay for the 35 employees, including herself. And uh, basically it goes on to say that the law, the CARES Act offered you know, $349 billion in loans for small businesses, blah, 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 blah. But among them, the bulk of the funds must go towards payroll. Salaries must remain intact. Employee headcount must not decrease. Businesses have until June 30th to rehire, laid off, or furloughed workers. And the anger came from employees who determined they'd make more money by collecting unemployment benefits than their normal paychecks. It's a windfall they see coming, uh, Black Lewis said of unemployment. In their mind, I took it away. I couldn't believe it, she added. On what planet am I competing with unemployment? Black Lewis is surely not the only entrepreneur to struggle with such dynamics. More than 26 million Americans filed for unemployment in the past five weeks. Uh, Congress is set to pour to get an additional $310 billion. And basically that there's uh, laws now that, that they're adding an extra $600 a week to the typical weekly benefits paid by one state. And then we see on the screen right now, there's a map that shows the maximum duration of unemployment benefits. And it looks like Montana is a good place to be unemployed over there because uh, uh, they have more than 26 weeks. A lot of places are 26 weeks and a few places are under 26 weeks. And then as you can see, if you're in Mississippi, it's a less generous state, and what it's saying is that full-time workers making less than twenty-one dollars an hour, or forty-three thousand six eighty a year, would make more money on unemployment than their job. And then you can see here from the CNBC article, other places like California, the break-even is fifty-four thousand dollars a year. Washington State, uh, sixty-two thousand dollars a year. And then here is the chart that shows, uh, you know, the share of yeah. unemployed people collecting benefits. Yeah, yeah, Luke. Well, there's also the Las Vegas workers that are now pushing back against the mayor that is calling to, of course, reopen casinos and hotels. And they're saying that they're not test subjects, that they're not people. But again, there's also, let's be honest here, there's some people getting unemployment that are very happy that they're getting paid not doing anything. There's a group of people like that. There's also a group of people who are saying that, you know, they're not test subjects. They're legitimately scared. They're legitimately in a bad place. And it legitimately does help. Both of those are true. There are no extremes. Let's not just generalize here. And again, there's a lot of criticism that could go around, whether it's the nurses and the TikTok videos. There's even nurses protesting the protesters. There's protesters protesting that they can't work. And again, uh, I think we all need to kind of have a step back here and just relax take a deep breath and understand that, you know, as humanity, we're all in this together and we're all going to get through this 
together, whether we like it or not. <laughs> so we could call out the the bull crap. We could call out the the bad players. You know, the nurses again with the TikTok videos. Keep that to yourselves. I know dancing helps them deal with stressful situations, but uh, maybe having it on TikTok is not the best best situation. Uh, I know a lot of protesters that are wanting their job, want wanting to work. Well, there's a lot of jobs available out there too, and a lot of them are, are legitimately people who are concerned about the economy They're, you know let, let's try to have a pragmatic look here and understanding of the entire situation because i think that approach is going to be a lot better than just jumping into one kind of hyperbolic viewpoint on the individuals because when we when we see human behavior a lot of it is done in a way where it's not done maliciously it's not done to hurt people those nurses making those TikTok videos, again, we have to see things from empathy. Some of them do deal with stressful situations. Some hospitals haven't been uh, inundated at all. Some hospitals aren't full at all. Some of them are. Um, some nurses deal with stress and pressure in many different ways, especially if you deal with uh, emergency situations. You see a lot of dark humor. Um, and, you know, that's how people cope. That's how humanity deals with it. Is that person trying to be evil and malicious? No. The person protesting, wanting his job back, is that person malicious and evil? No. But they, you have to come from this perspective of empathy, and then you could really understand, and then you could really solve the, the problem and situation. So, uh, again, I, I, and prove me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. If you're protesting to get your job back, why can't you just get all the jobs that are available right now? And there's a bunch of them, especially in the essential services. That's my take on it. Anything else you want to say or rebuttal about that, Tim? No, I mean, we've got other videos coming up on the economy, but I do want to point out that we are now available on uh, iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher, a few other places coming soon to Google, uh, iHeartRadio. So you guys will see on the, the ticker down below all the places, the bit.ly link. So, you know, for example, bit.ly slash CTN Podbean will give you the Podbean forward slash CTN iTunes, give you the iTunes. But, uh, you know, I think that that's, you know, I, me personally, I'd rather, uh, you know, I'm more of an auditory guy. I'm really busy running around. So getting a podcast is easier for me it might be easier for some people who uh might be watching this right now or don't have the time and just wanted to and, and, and in the era of shadow banning too when we can't rely on uh youtube always getting out the message it's a great a way to have a backup uh channel and backup feed i mean this is a backup channel so we're doing a backup channel to a backup channel but you know i think it is a good idea to you know be diversified in where we are luke and uh just one more platform for people to uh check us out on diversification is key in all aspects of life especially when it comes to information we're trying to give you information that you can't get anywhere else. If you thought we did that, share this video with your friends and family members immediately. Right now, take the little clicker button, click share, send it to someone. Hey, just like sideswipe them with it. Uh, be like, hey, check this out. Let me know what you think. And of course, we appreciate all of you amazing human beings doing that because if you didn't, no one would be watching us. And they only are because of that action. So love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on Change the News.